from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering Dell EMC World 2017. Brought to you by Dell EMC. Welcome back to Dell, e Dell EMC World. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight, along with my co-host, Keith Townsend. We are joined by Fernando Thompson. He is the uh, CIO of University of the Americas Puebla, Mexico. Thanks so much for joining us, Fernando. Thanks, Rebecca, to you. So I want you to just set the scene a little bit for our viewers and talk a little bit about some of the biggest technology problems you were facing on your campus. Well, Universidad de las Americas Puebla is in the state of, of Puebla. We have uh, around less than 10,000 students. We have uh, 1,000 employees. And we are full dedicated to research and development and also bachelor's degrees. Um, I used to work for the federal government and also for, uh, for the private sector in, in Televisa, in, in entertainment. But I have never been in such a huge challenge like in a university because, you know, um, it is, it is so difficult to implement the governance, but at the same time, the freedom. And if you think, well, for instance, when, when is a period of time where, where more uh, malware appears in the world? It's on vacations, where the students of the universities have enough time to build that kind of, of thing, not very creative people. So in, in the sense that, um, well, we, we, we live in an environment where you have to deal to deliver technology, to protect to, to millennials that doesn't want to be protected. And also, you know, they always ask for, for more services, no? And now it's coming the generation C, so it's going to be real tough for the next years. So, so, so set the scene and, and talk to us about the kinds of things you were trying to deliver, uh, better products, better speed, better uh, services to both students, prospective students, faculty and staff. Talk about what some of the needs were. Well, we have to think that actually technology is very important in the university because we have to prepare our, our students to give them the, the tools to face the, the, the future. The world is changing, and, and Mexico right now have a huge challenge because we're competing against China, Brazil, and, and India. We used to have an advantage with, with the price and people that is very well prepared and, and, and with the salaries, but not, not any longer. So we have to give this advantage to, to our students. So nine years ago, when I arrived to university, for instance, we have the subscription system, and it was awful, no, because it was very slow with the performance and not uh, very reliable. So the people was really complaining, you no, know, because we're a private private university. You always expect, you know, a good performance for a private university. And especially in subscription with your main customer that is the student. So we start to work to fix the the, 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 the main system and it takes us years, years, you no. Know? So we pass through uh, availability and reliability but bad performance now performance, but since we implement Extreme I.O. and we change our data center with, with Dell products, uh, this very year in, 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 in spring, in the spring semester, we make a huge, a huge change because the subscription system now uh, became, you know, one of the biggest transformation tools in the service for the, for the students. What happened was, that during the subscription, um, we announce a special day, a special hour, 8.30, and if you are okay with your administrative um, stuff and qualifications, you can get into the system and subscribe. Four years ago, that takes like a one hour or 45 minutes, but with the change that we made, now it is a matter of two minutes. So. Wow. It was a change of 100 degrees, no? What happened was that, yes, we changed the, the, the application, but also, you know, with this flash technology, we use it because at the end, what we want to make was, you know, to impact to the student in order that they can receive the schedule, he can take faster decisions. They move very fast with the computers and with the devices, so they just need the, the, the application. So we build it, we test it, and it worked fantastic. And, and let me tell you something, no? Um, how I measure, 
I don't have a business analytic tool or a business intelligence tool. What I have was, you know, access to Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> and Snapchat. And man, they give us such a compliment, you no, know, like, hey, TI finally did something well for us, you no? Know? So, and it was thousands of, of, of comments, you no? Know? Memes was waiting, up. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Memes was waiting, you know, to attack us like, you shall not pass, and stuff like that, like, like, like the like, like past years, but not, not, not this year. So it was, it was a, su it was a successful story, and now we are thinking to implement all these changes that we made in another, in another spaces of the, of the, of the, of the university. So let's talk about that a little bit. So that's, I think, is a great example of digital transformation. I don't need to ask you if you believe in digital transformation. That, that was the digital transformation to your business. Specifically, I'm interested in research. What type of research does the university do and how does your group play a role in enabling that? Yeah, basically, for instance, we have uh, four programs of, of PSD uh, with, with specialization in, in technology and also in environment. You know? One of the top challenges that, that we are facing in, in, Latin, in Latin America so we have to supply the technology that our, our researchers need and it has to be at the same level of the United States. We belong to the Southern Association of Colleges and Schools in the United States, so it's not uh, United States soil, but we, we belong to that, the, uh, the, to that association. So you have the same SLAs? Yeah, basically, basically, you know, and we have to supply, you know, all the bandwidth and performance because they're discussing at the same time with people in Texas or Wisconsin or Alaska or, or Brazil and they need you know for instance uh, high performance computing uh, storage uh, cloud tools and for them have to be you know pretty clear and, and transparent what I mean is that they don't care and they don't have to care about where is working of it is expensive or not no you have to, you have to, to, to supply what, what, what they need. Let me give an example. For instance, a fractal. If you send the, the information of a fractal, uh, we don't have a, a supercomputer in, the, in, in our university, but we have uh, a deal with another university, another university and they have the, the, this, this supercomputer. So what, what we do is to supply the connection and the computer to send information and to receive the information immediately in order that the graphic can have the information in, in real time. And people are taking decisions in different parts of the, of, 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 of the country with that information that we're sending. Sometimes it could be, uh, you know, if, I, if we're facing a hurricane or we're going to have a problem with, with water or if we want to avoid, you know, uh, you know something that ha happened with an earthquake or something like that, and with that kind of information, now our researchers certainly can know what, what is happening. So we give, the, we give the, the technology for them. We make a mixture between um, cloud computing services and also our data center. Then I became a wonderful tool because with Extreme IO and with our new servers, if you, if you can go to our our new data center you will you will you will realize that it's only dell and emc right there no and something funny is that we have a wonderful data center but to be honest with you we only use right now only three racks so the space that we are using right now with this new um disk is uh, the, the space that we are saving is is amazing no because if you can if you can see our racks you will see that we have, for instance, Clarion and DMX and another technology. Right now, we shut down all those all, the, all those racks. And round, right now, we are using just like uh, 40 inches of of of, of uh, disk. And man, you know, I have more performance. I have savings on on air, savings on electricity. Um, the people think that right that we are we are having you know more space with more racks and, and more of this, but not any longer. So I think what is going to happen with Dell and EMC in the future? I think that they are going to deliver, for instance, 100 terabytes in just in a USB <laughs> or something like that in the future. So there's not going to be any need of of, of, a, of a data center. Sitting ahead of no? ahead of a pin. Yeah. Fernando, thank you so much for joining us. No, thank you to you. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you. Thank I'm you. Rebecca Knight for Keith Townsend. We will have more from Dell EMC World after this.